Hey, this is Jesse Lamar High. And this is Nick Harper, and we're gonna break down our latest video for Taylor Bennett's Don't Wait Up. So we never actually shot Taylor in person. The whole video was shot remotely. Nick was in Seattle, Taylor was in Chicago, and I was in Oklahoma. Hey, Nick. For the shoot, we just called over FaceTime on a laptop and we just really just needed to get as much coverage as possible from multiple angles of him performing the song so that later we would have as many options as possible. We would have went with a different backdrop for this shoot, but it came together pretty quickly, so we just wound up making it work. It's a little rough around the edges and places uh, after we keyed it out, but uh, we knew it'd be on a cell phone eventually, so it wouldn't be that much of a problem. But definitely it would have made our lives a lot easier had we just filmed everything on a blue screen instead of a green screen. We wanted all the sets to have the same dimensions so that when we were building out everything, it was just very contained and it wound up being 22 inches long, 16 inches wide and 15 inches deep. That gave us the right amount of space to kind of build out a scene, but also it was small enough that we could keep the project, like I said, contained. For the most part, everything was just made of cardboard. We used some thinner pieces to make some of the curves because it was it's more pliable than regular cardboard. Um, but other than that, it was really just hot glue guns, regular cardboard, and the 110 cardstock we used for printing textures on. Every time we finished the structure of a set, we would then you know figure out how we were going to cover up the the cardboard texture. So like, are we going to paint it? Are we going to uh, print textures, or, or is it some you know mixture of both? Setting up the props and the set dressing was a lot like on a bigger set, you know, with flats and everything, but this was just a miniature version of that. We didn't have any camera movement throughout the video, so we knew every scene really had to look awesome. The phone was always connected to a dock. Um, sometimes we hit it, sometimes we didn't, but the this, this standard phone dock from Apple turned out to be the best way to prop up the phone. That dock specifically has is like tilted back a bit, which helped reduce a lot of the glare that would be on the phone otherwise, like from, from our lights. We're super proud of the, these little pools of light you can see on the back wall uh, that we created with the Aperture M9 Mini LED lights. Inside the awning we made a special door on top so we could place the lights inside and cut out holes to shape the light up against the back wall. The Aperture M9 and MX Mini LED lights were super helpful throughout the video. Don't know if these are like the latest model of, these, of the mini LEDs from Aperture, but we've linked to these two in the description below. The disco ball you see up top is just a Christmas ornament. Uh, we were trying to think of where you could get a miniature disco ball, but we couldn't find anything. We walked up and down this craft store. Um, and then I kind of thought about like, oh, like we're heading towards Christmas. And sure enough, there were like actual disco ball ornaments. So you know, don't sleep on the Christmas ornaments. We wanted the balloons to feel like they were floating, but we needed a solution to get rid of whatever was gonna hold the balloons up. So on the day, we just kind of came up with this idea to use some clear packing tape. Um, and then I just ended up like masking out in After Effects later, just tracking it. But yeah, you can see the finished effect here. So for this effect, we basically just cut a hole in the floor. And inside that hole, we have the dock and the phone is just sitting on that. And the phone never moves. We always just move the set past the phone, but it always feels like he's moving just because we have him oriented, kind of looking off towards the way that we're pushing it. So this first shot of him coming out of the studio is just wiping across a piece of cardboard. And the same exact thing is happening with this tunnel shot that we shot later on. And we just kind of combine the clips. This end shot right here is just like the intro into the tunnel section, but the only difference is it's three shots stitched together instead of two. The aperture lights, once again, worked <laughs> worked really great as physical lights on the subway cars. Um, but yeah, I, I had a pretty good idea of Chicago's transit system, and we tried to make everything like as close as as close to real as possible. Um, for anyone interested, I have a side project called Across the Tracks Project, and luckily I had like a ton of photos from Chicago uh, that I could like reference to make the train and the stations and all, all the stuff make it feel as authentic as we can while you know putting our own twists on it, basically. So for this elevator scene, we had to stitch together a few things to make the final image you see in the video. We pushed the gate down into place and filmed the full elevator shot that you see in the final video. But after that, we got a separate shot that was just the strings on top of the elevator jiggling, and we stitched those two pieces together so we had our full elevator shaft complete. 
The final shot at the top of the elevator was a bit tricky. We actually shot this in reverse. Like the video was playing backwards on the phone and we pulled the bed straight up so we could comp everything in with the final elevator shot in, in post. Nick actually did this iris pull for real, so this isn't a cross dissolve or anything. He just had his hand on the barrel of the lens and just faded up as the as the credits rolled, which, you know, adds a little bit. It does feel like it adds a little bit more of an organic value to it, but maybe that's just us. Maybe we're crazy, but I don't know. It looks cool. So we just want to say thanks to everyone that, that checked out the video and thanks to Taylor, Doomsday, Jake, and everyone who made this one a possibility. And talk to you guys in the next one.